but he, he handled it very well, did Rafa. His English is improving pretty dramatically. OK, next up, we're going to the Vodafone Arena, where Martina Hingis, they know her pretty well here, up against Natalie Dushy of France. And Joe and Chris will take you through that. Before we go, just uh, a few shots of Rafael Nadal. And her opponent this afternoon is making her 10th appearance at the Australian Open. Last year and now we're switching over to see Martina Hingis. And Chris and Joe will take you through that, and uh, Fru and I will be here for the evening session. But uh, here is Martina Hingis, uh, former champion here, and here's a former British number one, Chris Bradlam. Thank you, Simon. It's been a hot, hot, steamy day. And let's hope we have uh, a good match here. And here's uh, Barbara Shett, who caught up with uh, Martina Hingis before we get underway here. Ein Jahr danach treffen wir Martina Hingis wieder hier in Melbourne. Damals äh, hast du nach einer dreijährigen Pause wieder zum Schläger gegriffen. Wie fühlt es sich jetzt an, in das Turnier wieder zu gehen? Ja, schon ein bisschen besser. Man, ist, man hat viel mehr Selbstvertrauen. Jetzt bin ich Nummer 6 gesetzt. Letztes Jahr war ich so ein Floater im, im Feld. Und äh, ja, es ist klar, eine ganz andere Situation. Diesmal... Weiß ich, wo ich stehe und gegen wen saying ich she's spiel. feeling so uh, much better, more self-assured, ranked number kann, six last year, just another participant, but this year completely fahren. different. Wie know where I stand, who my contenders are, strengths and weaknesses. Wo, wo hast du deine and uh, oder my game. Hast du and how's gearbeitet? your game improved during ja, the past denke, year? Did you focus on your strengths or did you work on something else? I think everything has improved this year, actually. You have to be careful about younger players, such as Ivanovic, Chakva, Dadzi, Jankovic. And the pressure is always increasing from all the different players. And uh, always there. That's why you have to give 100% of yourself to be in the top shape and be ambitious to succeed. Hast du jetzt das Gefühl, dass du ein bisschen mehr Druck hast? Und du fühlst, dass du mehr Pressure hast als ein Jahr ago hier? Ja, man muss mehr beweisen. Irgendjemand hat mehr yes, Erwartungen, wenn man auf sich natürlich anstellt. Und ja, ich muss mehr beweisen. Ich habe mehr höhere Erwartungen als ich selbst. Letztes Jahr habe ich die Quarterfinals und jetzt weiß ich, dass die Ergebnisse variieren. Still, each round is difficult and I'm looking forward to each game. I was always well placed in Melbourne, so I hope to have a good tournament. Ja, in Melbourne hatte ich immer ein gutes Pflaster, von dem her hoffe ich schon auf eine, ein, ein gutes Turnier. Two minutes. Yes, and I'm sure many will hope that she has a good tournament and a good year again. It's always good to have the variety of Martina Hingis and if Natalie Dushi is aware of the head-to-heads and let's hope she's not studied it too closely. Of course, she's not had a win against the Swiss Miss. It all started in 98 in the US Open, a four and four loss. Four straight sets victories for Hingis. And the last in Zurich last year. Back home, Hingis winning three and three. Erste Runde, Nathalie Dichy, die war, glaube ich, vor zwei Jahren sogar im Semifinale einmal da. And Barbara Shepp was also saying to on the first round, you'll play Nathalie Dichy two years ago. I think she even reached the semifinals yeah, here. She's got a very good reputation. And how do you feel about that one? And have you played against her? And Martina is saying, as we've just seen, yes, I've played many times already. Last year, twice, a short time ago, we played in Zurich in the second round. And I left the court being the winner. So I'll hope that'll be the same on Tuesday. Now, publicly, Barbara is uh, congratulating Martina Hingis on her engagement. Going through the same situation, because Barbara's engaged as well, that uh, we would get married. Have you already set a date? And Martina's saying, no date yet. Everything happened quite suddenly. And in the past two weeks, there was much wedding talk. But now I'm just focusing on tennis again. And Barbara's saying, good luck. See you again soon. Do you think... Martina asked Radek, or Radek asked Martina. What do you think there, Joe? Should we get a cat amongst them? <laughs> I wouldn't like to say. <laughs> it's a nice story, though, isn't it? Yeah, lovely like story. Steffi and Andre Agassi. 
getting married in the end. It's a great story. So nice for them to be indoors. It's still very hot outside. It's got windy, but uh, there are now some clouds overhead. So they're hoping to get play on the outside courts. Um. They said by five, but uh, I'm not sure that's going to happen. Some people said maybe not even until seven o'clock tonight. And we heard some amazing stories, Joe, about casualties on yes. day two. Yes, I mean, uh, Sharapova apparently went straight onto a drip when she got in. Laura Gran Granville couldn't even do press today. She was feeling mm. so bad. And a couple of the guys who uh, felt very ill. And I think overall, you know, it's just been such a, a hot... Uh, and the wind has been hot. And it's mm. just so hard for these players. I don't care how fit you are. It's just too hard for them to play in that heat. Yeah. Different in here. Air-conditioned, of course. In this Vodafone Arena, 10,000 its seats. So day two, first round action. Martina Hingis, the number six seed this time around. Three times a champion in a row, remember. 97 is world number four. She beat Mary Pierce in the final. 98, Conchita Martinez. And the following year as world number two, she beat Moresmo in the final. Runner-up three times as well. Hingis will begin. So, of course, we know Martina is also a very good doubles player, so she won't mind coming to the net. Dry volleys, ordinary volleys. Super. I've always said, Joe, I think she's so much better when she looks to come forwards, mm. does she? But she doesn't seem to really have that much confidence in it. No, I mean, she struggled last year. It w wasn't great for her, and her ranking's gone down. Mm. Well played. How much would it have left a scar? The fact in the semis here two years ago against Davenport, she was two points from the final. Yeah, I don't know about that. I just think she played so well and, and really in the end Lindsay rose to the occasion. So mm -hmm. I don't think she can blame herself particularly for not getting to the final. I thought it was an amazing way that she played at the time. And you can just see she's a little bit of a shadow of her former self at the moment with the confidence worries. always looks so cool on court. She's been there in so many tough situations so many times. Staggering to think she's still only 26. Break point early on. This will help to she, having never beaten Hingis in six previous meetings, to get a good start. Hmm. Looked to improve the serve, hasn't she, particularly coming into her comeback year last mm. year? 
tried to, but I think as the year went on, actually, it sort of went back to where it had been before. It's just hard. She puts or tries to put extra stick on the first serve, but then she misses it, and the second one doesn't hold up well. Wow. Just not making the adjustment over the height of the net. The break point. the colour on Martina. Mm, but I, I hope she wasn't going to wear that <laughs> if yes, they'd been outside. <laughs> my goodness. Oh. Looks so fit. Works very, very hard in the gym. And they all do, don't they? Most of them. Ooh, I feel a story <laughs> coming on, folks. Bit of gossip. Not at all. The <laughs> <laughs> game to hold, the opening game, when you've had break points in it. First game. And for Natalie, does she, Joe, she's never beaten Hingis, keep saying that, six times they've met. Mm -hmm. So is it about mini goal setting, get a good start, stay with her early on, try and build? I mean, or do you actually think about trying to win the match? I suppose you have to do both at once because you have to be confident enough to come out and think I'm going to win this match this time. But I, yeah, I think it is just one stage at a time out mm. here and concentrate really hard on what you're trying to do yeah. and try not get too carried away with what Martina does because we all know she's so good at doing that, weaving you into her web. Yeah. I mean, the only set that she has won against Hingis was in their first match last year, early on in the year in the Tier 1 in... Tokyo, Pan Pacific, and won the first set to she on that occasion, then went down five and two. Whenever she hits a clean winner from the baseline, it must give her a good feel. Yes, yeah. yeah, something she's tried to do, the power. I mean, I remember last year when we saw her first match against Von Areva. Oh, fantastic, And she was up the court and really hitting it hard. The serve was good, and we were absolutely blown away yeah. with Martina. Yeah, I do remember that. Night match, crowd loved yeah. it. Yeah. And interesting that last year, when she didn't know what to expect, yes. the nerves were right up there for Martina. She was totally focused, mm. where she's had the year last year. So she's almost knowing what to expect mm. and knowing what a bonus issue might be. So I'm not sure what's actually better. No, but and also she doesn't want to commit to what she thinks she can do this year at yeah. all. You know, what do you want to win, Martina? She says, oh, I'm not going there. I just want to improve still. Yeah. Well, we said about uh, does she getting a good start to stay with Hingis. She didn't get the break points in the opening game and is in danger here. comfortably to love is the writing on the wall again for the French woman well, it's going to be very hard for her to change this around because she's really got to up her game she's got to be quite aggressive it's the only way really she's going to get a win here 15. super 
On paper, tough draw this first round. It is, yeah. Nasty draw, really. Martinez feeling a little nervous about coming back again. Looking pretty calm at the moment, though. <laughs> yes. Fifteen all. Interesting match as well on the Rod Laver Arena. Kim Kleisters in her very last Australian Open, remember, retiring at the end of this year, the number four seed, playing Vasilisa Badina of Russia, who's made a tour final this year, the youngster. New face. So it'll be interesting what happens over there. We'll keep you posted. Go! 30, 15. See the spin being put on the ball from Martina. She's so clever at that. She gets into a little bit of trouble. She just tweaks the hand and the racket, and the ball flies to depth every time. Oh. 40, 15. Super. Good strength. Just a little glance towards her opponent. So important to have a look on the way into the chair and then back out of the chair as well. See if there's an attitude change. But we caught up with Natalie uh, Dushi about this head-to-heads. This is what she had to say. Je crois que j'ai jamais gagné en fait contre elle. Donc, saying I've just simply never won against her. It's not an easy round. C'est une fille qui a joué contre moi l'année dernière. J'ai perdu. Until now, I have an awful record against her. Though she had two bad results in Grand Slams. Pour l'instant, j'ai pas perdu. Until now, I have an awful record against her. Though she had bad results in Grand Slams recently. So she's going to feel under pressure. It'll be up to me to take advantage of it. I know she is beatable. She lost last week against Jankovic. Even though Elena is in shape, Hinga still lost in the first round, so she must be a bit doubtful. Now it is up to me to use it. Jankovic in form, but she lost in the first round. So she is also maybe trying to figure out where she is going. So I'm going to take advantage of it. I'm not so sure I buy any of that, to be honest with mm. you. I think that's wishful thinking and uh, trying to give herself something to hang on to. Yeah, well, I suppose you have to somehow. <laughs> Love three, first set. That's how good it's got to be. Mm. She looks as though she was looking to come in in this rally. She won't beat Hingis from the back. No. No chance. No, she's got to force from the back and then try and take the opportunities with a dry volley or an orthodox volley. Legs for service. Awkward to deal with those mishit looping returns. It just looks at the moment as though Martina can pick and choose. What does she want to do? I'll force on this one. Got an easy ball to finish. Or I'll play back on this one, force on the next one. Not a lot of threat coming from Dushi so far.
It's all a little easy at the moment, dictating in all areas. This phenomenal champion. 42 titles. Nearly $20 million in prize money. So she can afford a nice wedding. Yeah. For love and quickly. Just going back to that interview with Dushi about the fact that Martina's probably feeling doubtful because she lost to Yankovic first round or hasn't had good results in slams last year. I mean, whoever is advising her, if hearing that, change the tune, I would have thought. Mm. Just it's just not right. No, I wouldn't focus. I wouldn't focus on Hingis. Yeah. I'd focus on myself. Exactly. Yeah. It's weird. I mean, is anyone showing any doubt out here? No. Yep. It's the French woman. I think it's just having a little look. Yeah, it's really wide. Yeah. Ooh. Didn't look clearly wide. I can't believe to she me. didn't challenge it. <laughs> Does she? No challenge system, is there? No. That's probably why, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that reminder. <laughs> yeah, but I think that just, just the <laughs> shows you how ridiculous it is on Vodafone. I think a lot of people have been saying, why isn't there a challenge system there? You immediately think of it. It's a big court. Yeah, no, with you. Well, five love. It's plain sailing for Martina Hingis. Just 15 minutes this match. This could be the quickest of the tournament so far, apart from the retirements, of course. And it's a similar story over on the Rod Laver Arena. Kim Kleister's playing Bardina. Three love in the opening set. It's pretty one-way traffic there too. So maybe a better match would have been Bardina against Dushi. Yes. <laughs> and it's still under cover on both courts, of yes. course. Well, there's talk about not getting outside until seven, as yeah. uh, mentioned. Again. It was a large cheer when they said the roof was going to go on, especially on the Rod Laver. If yes. you're sitting in the sun there. Looking at a bagel set, does she? And all the sets that she's played against, Hingis, she's never lost it, six love. It's on the cards here. At five love. Well done. Leaning on the ball. Her best play. Well, this is how she plays best. She stays very near the baseline and sort of swivels into the courts on her shots. And I agree with you. I think that's when she hits them best.
just so easy. That's right. Just really no depth, not being hit powerfully enough to cause Hingis any problems at all. Two set points. Nineteen minutes, a six love set. Dushi and Hingis go back to the chair, and I hope that at the chair for Dushi, there's a drawing board because she's got to start again and just try and wipe that first set away. It really was a miserable first set for Dushi and Martina Hingis on. One of the hottest days you're likely to get in Melbourne. She barely broke into a sweat. Just the four unforced errors. Well, that's typical of Martina Ingus. Now, don't forget Eurosport.com. And for those of you in Britain, Eurosport.co.uk. Give the website a visit. You can catch up with all the live scoring of all the matches during the Australian Open here. The 20th time at Melbourne Park. Look at all your favourites, see how they're faring. Although you won't see much live scoring at the moment because there's only two matches going on on the indoor arenas. And Joe, you've got to come out with your line, which was a good line. We were in the press restaurant, lots of players milling around and obviously lots of people not being able to play because of the heat. Yes. Well, it was so funny. I was sitting there watching everyone. I thought, this is exactly like Wimbledon when it rains. Everyone's milling around the restaurants. They don't know what to do with themselves. They don't know when they're going to go on court. And it, was, it had that same feeling, except yeah. every time someone opened the door, a blast of hot air came in. <laughs> yeah. It's like waiting for the rain to stop. Second says, Ingers to serve. So first point. Second set. Let's hope it's more of a challenge, this one. And also, Joe, we were discussing about the heat policy. We know about the heat policy being in play, but it's crazy, isn't it, that mm. when you know the temperature is going to soar and quickly, that they yeah. even allow matches to start yeah. outside at 11 o'clock by 11.30. No more matches because it's way mm. over 35, but people have got to battle it out there for hours, yeah. and it's a health risk. There's a lot of discussion going on. They're saying, you know, at Wimbledon, if it rains, everyone comes off. I know it's not quite the same, obviously, but if people keep playing here, actually, uh, maybe someone in the end could die. Yeah. You never know with yeah. the extreme conditions, especially if guys are playing a five-set match and it goes on for four hours. Yeah. So I don't understand when the heat rule comes into effect, stop everything it's yeah. not fair on anybody to have to play no nope, it's not and the medics have been hard at it today a lot of casualties on day two with the weather lots of players on drips players unable to even walk to press to discuss their plight and a love game to further distress to she here yeah i mean unless you've been here and you've experienced the heat I mean mm. we'd sat outside for lunch and in the shade yes. and it was so hot we had to go indoors yes. so can you imagine being out there on a rebound ace court full of rubber content which mm. it just puts it all back up at you mm. and it's so much hotter on a tennis court than it is in that little garden we were sitting in in yeah. the shade and in the lovely garden outside by the Heineken tent with the massive screen it was completely empty mm at lunchtime. No one was out in the sun. No one. Let alone playing tennis in it. 15 love. So it's quite an area of debate. It really is. It 
think maybe what you've got to do is whatever the committee is or whoever the committee is that decide on the heat policy rule and make those decisions, let them go out and play in it before they have their meeting. <laughs> Just before they have their meeting, before all the discussions take place. Yeah. So they're talking from experience. Mm. 14. Yeah. Some good serving at last. Something's got to help her out here. Yeah, this is a must-win game, isn't it? Just to get her campaign started. Well, she has to keep being proactive, even if she misses a few. isn't it? It's a horrible feeling when you're getting a battering. Mm. You're trying hard. Nothing's really going for you. And Ingus is the sort of last person to take her foot off your head. love to mm. juice. Unfortunately, I just feel as the rally goes on that Hinkers is going to win it every time. Almost so does she has to step up first two or three shots and just take it on. Yeah. She's getting nowhere yeah. like this. doubt on the approach but I won't go back to the interview again because I think we've exhausted that but when you think about the fact she's not beaten her six times and she knows she's really good at coming forwards to she she's done it six times in this match so far or five times she's won four of the five points at the net when she's got there but only five times has she got there Again, it looks good when she's looking to build the point to then come in, but it's not exactly caution to the wind to try to get a first win, tactically. No. And I think it has to be. I mean, feet in the air when she hit that one, you can see from her confidence is so low that she isn't as free, maybe, as she would normally be. Mm. See, Hingis couldn't bear missing that return <laughs> reaction. Yes. She expects to make everything. <laughs> She won that point. He covered the ground yes. well. Well, you would have thought there it would have been a passing shot, but it was a very good move from Martina.
Good right. serve. Uh, so one thing that's starting to work a bit better for her, finding different serves, going wide down the middle, a little bit harder. If she can win this love and love, mm. she will. Absolutely. She's graph-like in that regard. And Chris Effort as well. She was the one I played that always would win six love, six love. Never give you a point if she mm. had to. Yeah. Well done. It's good play. The out wide serve, the wrong footer again, looking to construct the point moving forwards. Providing dividends. This looks too easy, doesn't it? Yeah, she looks so relaxed. Mm. They're not relaxed in a way that sort of is complacent, just free flowing. She holds. It's one or second set. And just to keep you posted at home, wherever you're watching the second day's coverage from, Simon's just updated news on uh, the matches outside and the delays and so on. The next match on this court, the Vodafone Arena, is Carlos Moya against James Blake. What an attractive match that is for you. The uh, repeat of the Sydney final last week. Uh, after that will be Andy Murray against Alberto Martin. Not before 7.30 local time, which is 8.30 in the morning, Tuesday morning on British Eurosport. But uh, that is when he will be playing. 15 love. And we are also hearing that uh, the matches outside that were suspended because of the heat will start again in 30 minutes. 30 minutes from now. But uh, just to remind you, Andy Murray will follow Moya and Blake not before two hours from now. So surely later than scheduled, but uh, that's the plan. A bit of a surprise when she misses one. <laughs> yes. Six love set can be a funny thing. Can affect your concentration.
It's looking very routine for Martina Hingis. She'll be disappointed with that because it was an ace, yes. potentially. <laughs> Well done in the end by Natalie. Hmm. A serve and volley ace. That'll please her. No smile. Just another game one. And edging towards that two set win. The machine's calling it on that one. Just keeping everybody on their toes. Hopefully, to sheep. Not best please, perhaps. And can't challenge, of course, on this court. But uh, somebody else who's creating a great challenge will be Kim Kleisters. And remember, she's on the Rod Laver Arena. This is how her first set finished, rather like the one here. It was a six-love set, but it was quicker than the 19 minutes for Hingis. It was about 13 minutes for Kim Kleisters. So life's all about learning, and it's going to be a big learning curve for Bardina. Mm. That's for sure. Maybe a star of the future, but the star of now in this match is Kim Kleisters. Yes, she's hard to stop when she's in that kind of mood, Kim Kleisters. Time. I'm still for you, Joe. Just think for Dashi and the rest of this match, he's just got to work away forwards more and more. It's five out of six points, one at the net. Yes, I, I do. I really do. And I think she could have snuck in on a couple more yeah. come to the net. But we've said her confidence is low. And, and when it is, you don't really look for things mm. as much as when you're feeling good and you're really eager and you're sharper to get up the court. Yeah. Played in Sydney. Lost in the first round of qualifying, did the she, to Jill Krabus. Currently ranked at uh, 51 in the world, does she? Pingis, number seven, the sixth seed here. Moved up one because Justine Enan Arden, unfortunately, is not here. Super. Well, that's a good sign. 15 line. The angled shot in the end. From the crowd. That must sound good for Dashi. Yeah, she moved well and it was lovely preparation for the shot. I love game. 
to level. Now, here's a little mini goal. She stayed with her at the start of this second set, so that's uh, first post attained. Yes, I like her attitude, though. She's obviously not feeling great about her tennis at the moment, but mm. she's not shrugged her shoulders. She's just tried to get on with it. Yep. Super. She's growing into this match. Certainly got a hold of that. Probably one of the hardest shots she's hit the match so far. Don't think we'll see Hingis trying that again. No. That was very awkward for Hingis once she got up there. I think she was having a little look to see if it was actually going to bounce out, first of all. Here we go. But that was on the line. And she knows where to move next. Third double. Thirty. Forty. Thirty. Yeah. Well, that was a very good first serve. Reached up to it and got quite a lot of speed. 105, nearly 106 miles per hour. Keeps the nose in front, keeps the pressure on, and the scoreboard rolling. Set and 3 2 now for Martina Hingis. It's still an uphill battle for Dushit. Kleisters is uh, storming to victory on Rod Laver. Set and 3 love, 40 love. Short break. Stay with us. So set and three two. So three times champion in a row here. Interesting, of course, with Mum not here and she's independent now, engaged to be married. A lot of talk about that on the women's tour. You know, Vera Dementia always with Elena and mm. whether or not she needs to make the break and become more independent. Can't imagine Dementia playing without Mum sitting in the box. It would look odd. No. I think a lot of us are surprised to hear that Dementia still haven't asked advice or mm. tried another coach. Yeah. So at least Martina's mother does play tennis mm. and is a coach. Love 15. And why do you think that is, Joe? Do you think it's simply because they don't feel they need the advice? They don't, they're doing fine. Mm. What she's done so far has been pretty amazing in her career. A couple of finals in majors and countless titles and so on. Well, maybe. I, is I it think money? Uh, may, I don't know. Maybe it's trusting somebody enough. Yeah. Yeah, it's so clever. Wasn't looking to pass, just looking to make it awkward. So quick, as soon as she hit the shot, which was dipping, 
and she's off and running after this. There she goes. Already got her eye on the ball. In trouble now. And deeper. Three break points. Forced errors in the match from Hingis. 15 winners. It's always her trademark. I think he's so little. Oh, mm. Still one way traffic, really. As hard as she is trying, she just can't get it together. It's a pretty impressive scoreboard. Yes, it is. And she's taking it in a stride really martina because natalie did get a bit better in this second set she's just absorbed the pace she's still totally in control of proceedings Fifteen left. not that crispness of shot when she reached the semi-final here, we saw from Natalie Dushy. I just think she's lost her way in what is the best way for her mm. to play. She was never going to beat Hingis from the back, that's for sure. 40 love. Well, it says she doesn't have a coach yeah. at the moment. Yep, so. she's got a hitting partner. Or Sven Grunewald. Yes. Father has been influential in her career. Game, Hingis. But there's no influence on the outcome of this, it seems. Hingis, Hingis just, just marching on. A love game. And a commanding six love, five two lead. What do you make of her draw, Joe? She's, uh, although just before that, we're going to do an update of uh, what's happening on the Rod Laver Arena. Kim Kleisters is uh, romping as well. It's six love, four one. It was six love, four love. So thank heavens for that for Bardina, 19 years of age from Russia. She's got on the scoreboard, but she's still got a feel for her six love and uh, four love it is rather. So it could still be a love and love victory. And it's just five love now. Let's hope it's not a love and love because that would be horrible mm. for anybody. <laughs> it is, especially when you're trying your hardest. And I think Kim must be playing very well. So, sorry, Joe, back to the draw. Yes, I, I think she's got a pretty good draw, really. There's maybe Dinara Safina, who, she, of course, she lost to in the final of the Gold Coast. And then uh, Kim Kleister's maybe in the quarterfinal. So, all in all, though, I think she'll look at that draw and think, you know, it's not too bad, really. Can't see any sticky ones until she's won at least three matches.
15 all. Played. And of course, Joe, you mentioned during the break about the fact the matches are starting again outside and the implications of that for the two show courts. Well, of course, now they've got to open the roofs after this match is finished here and Kleisters has finished on the Rod Laver. So that'll take yeah. a little while, 20 minutes, is it? Yeah, there'll, there'll certainly be quite a break. Yeah. I know, Joe, but I'm sure you got an opinion straight away. Can you see Martina Hingis winning a major again? Not at the moment, no. Far off it? Pretty much. When Getting you got the power being the problem? Yeah, Sharapova, I know Kleist is retiring at the end of this year, but Enin Arden, Moresmo, can't really see it. Hmm. How long will she tolerate that? to ask her, but she's been quite cagey in her answers, hasn't she? Yeah. I think she's quite happy at the moment running along as she's doing. Still not happening for the sheep. Two points from the end of the match. went the wrong way there as well and played it straight back to Dushi and she still couldn't do anything about it. Match point. Oh. The easiest win of the six for Hingis coming in was one and one in Rome eight years ago. that feel about it that it would end with a double fault love and two the clenched fist for martina hingis i'm sure there's no way she would have imagined it being as easy or as one-sided as that no i'm sure and i expect she's glad number one she was playing indoors on a day like this and number two it was over very quickly so a happy face you always want to conserve energy in a grand slam that's for sure yes it can be crucial. Didn't play in the heat, and as you say, love and two, job done. She might even go and have another hit. So, there will be quite a break here, we think, because uh, I'm assuming that they will open the roof which will take 15 minutes around that sort of time before James Blake and Carlos Moya can uh, get onto court and remember that to uh, Andy Murray particularly for those of you on British Eurosport will follow that match so keep your eye on Moya Blake and you'll know when Andy Murray will be getting ready to play now to fill up that time we're going to be showing you some uh, highlights of what's been happening from the women's and men's sides of things.
54 minutes. Kim Kleister's won love and love. Much quicker than that as well. So it was a double bagel. So you've really got to feel for Bardina. Well, it's but it's uh, that's that's the tennis world. Yep, it's tough <laughs> at times. Of course it is. And Bardina, well, if she's going to be a champion, she's got yep. to learn, learn quick, and come back stronger mm. as a result of the experience, if you yep. can call it that. Exactly. You've got to go to the practice court and just be more determined to work harder. I think that's what all the champions make should make the rest of the field feel feel that they have to get out there to catch up mm. not not to stay with them but catch up first of all and then of course number one at the time everyone's always looking to them so here's some highlights of day two let's start with kim kleisters Sorry, we've got a few technical problems, so uh, we'll just stay on these reruns of Martina Hingis's victory here. And her attitude throughout was pretty terrific, wasn't it? The ruthlessness, just getting the job yep. done. No lack of concentration at any time. Yeah, no wobble, no nothing. She just wanted it over as much as she, can, she could do. And she went about it the right way. Yeah. Class act. So we are now going to be able to bring you the highlights. And these would be...